We're going to talk about why we need signs next. The program you're about to watch is part of a free audio series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled The Message, The Miracles, and The Multitudes. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code MMM23 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are continuing our series that I've entitled The Message, The Miracles, and The Multitudes. And we have got something for everyone uh, during this series. I have my study notes. And if you're a study note taker, a note taker, we took the notes for you. And if you've ever downloaded my study notes before, you know how to do that. They're free. Go to the website. Look on the home page for the study note button and pick out uh, your version of the message, the miracles, and the multitudes. We also have my original audio series that I did on this, this teaching, and uh, it's four messages. They're around 50 minutes apiece. It's a an regular audio series. This is the USB version for a gift of $24. You can receive this. We'll mail it to you. And this is the CD version, so you look for that on the product page and you can get your uh, version of that and if you are into downloads that's the one we're going to give away for free if you want to download this audio to your computer you pick the mp3 download uh, selection and at checkout enter the code mmm23 and then you can download this free of charge we're also doing a book bundle which i'll talk about later as I said, we're doing something for everyone, so uh, stay tuned. And in fact, uh, I want to pray for you at the end of this program. Uh, we're talking about healing. We might as well enjoy it ourselves or partake of it ourselves and, uh, because it's certainly something that Jesus did for all of us. So um, in, this, in the uh, teaching that we've done, we've mentioned this scripture several times. I'm going to begin with it today. John 5, 36, Jesus said, I have a greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So Jesus didn't just say, God sent me and you'll just have to take my word for it. He actually pointed to the works that he did, to the signs and wonders, the miracles that, that he did in his ministry as, as, as confirming who he was and, uh, and where he came from. Well, if Jesus used these things to prove his identity and to validate his message, then if we can do that, we should do it as well. We shouldn't expect people to believe us just because we're on a, on a ch in a church or behind a pulpit or because we wrote a book. Uh, there's all kinds of lies in books, and they're everywhere. And there's all kinds of people uh, putting out all kinds of messages that are not true. Uh, it, there's a, a competition, a lot of competition for people's attention. Uh, man, I, I've been scammed by the best of them. And uh, in fact, I've said this many times, but I need to hire someone full time just to keep make sure that the things I'm paying for uh, the people I'm paying to, to do goods and services for me don't cheat me because you just have to watch out all the time. Uh, that's the world we live in. So it causes people to be very skeptical. And there is nothing in this world that will confirm our message like a supernatural miracle, something that cannot be denied. And I, I, I can tell you, people are hungry for the supernatural. People are hungry to, to believe something uh, you can see this on TV. They're always searching for ghosts. I'm just surprised some of these uh, programs that, that, that seem to last on TV where they're looking for ghosts and they do all these cameras in the dark, you know, and they're listening for sounds. And I'm like, how does that last? Who watches these things? But there's a hunger. Uh, people want to find something that's, that's deeper than, than the physical. They want to find something in another dimension. And man, nothing will, will, will relay the importance of the gospel and the reality of God like a miracle, like a healing, a physical demonstration of God's presence. Let me uh, quote this, and this is from a book, as I've said before, called Christ the Healer. And the author's name is F.F. F. Bosworth. He lived in the 1800s. 
So it's, it, he actually did these things, practiced these principles before the Azusa Street Revival, before the, the modern day charismatic movement, before the healing revival that happened in America in the 40s and 50s, uh, in the 1940s and 50s, F.F. F. Bosworth did these things in the 1800s just to prove to us that it works. And I think his book is one of the greatest books that was ever written on the subject of healing uh, other than the Bible. It's like a textbook. Uh, on the subject of divine healing. And if you're needing healing in your body, it's a wonderful book to feed on and read. I read it every once in a while. I'll read that book because it just is so full of truth, so powerful. But one of the, the points that he makes in that book has become this series. And I'm going to quote him again. It's, he said, If Christ and his apostles could not draw the multitudes without miracles, does he expect more from us? Instead of the ministry of healing diverting from the more important matter of salvation for the soul, we have seen more happy conversions in a single week than we ever saw in a whole year of evangelistic work during the 13 years before the Lord led us to preach this part of the gospel in a bolder and a more public way. So he was dealing with criticism. He was an evangelist who just preached for 13 years. He preached salvation and he had some results. He began to emphasize healing and have healing meetings, and he got criticized for it. They said, you're diverting people's attention from the more important issue of salvation, and you shouldn't do that. And his response is, we get more people saved in a week now by preaching healing and having healing services than we used to get saved in a whole year. So you tell me, is it diverting attention or not? Of course, it's, uh, there, there's something additional that you have to preach. And if you, if, if you would take someone like Billy Graham, for example, he only preached salvation and he reached people, but there was only one Billy Graham and uh, he was unique to his time. Uh, I would dare say that that approach won't work today, that people are not going to gather in coliseums to hear a man talk about salvation. But healing works in every generation. And so F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth was more like Billy Graham for 13 years. He preached and offered salvation alone, salvation from sins, and he had some results. But in his own words, when he began to preach the healing message in a more bold way and present it as an option, he had more people saved in a week than he used to get saved in a year. And then he goes on to say, As soon as our revivals get underway, hundreds nightly crowd forward to give their hearts and lives to God, and whole cities are put to talking about Jesus. Other evangelists who have visited our meetings are proving this to be true in their own meetings. In fact, um, I read in his book, Christ the Healer, of a Baptist evangelist who began to offer healing and pray for the sick, and his... his uh, soul winning um, numbers went through the roof. And he said this, this Baptist preacher who began to preach uh, healing along with salvation, he said, I wouldn't go back to the old way for all the money in the world. In other words, he found the, a better way to reach people and he was never going to give it up. So um, there may be opposition and obviously there, it, there is, um, but it's worth it because the, there are more people reached this way than any other. Uh, many people are preaching only the forgiveness of sins. And if you had to choose one or the other, certainly we want to get people saved. But the gospel never had to be one or the other. The gospel, in fact, Jesus purchased healing when he purchased forgiveness. And the gospel in the, in the beginning was presented that way. It wasn't presented as a separate uh, uh, option. Uh, it was all presented together. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. This is the writer of Hebrews talking about these same things. He said, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So the subject here is salvation. Preaching Jesus, getting people saved, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. 
So Jesus preached on the kingdom of God, salvation. His disciples then began to preach salvation in the kingdom of God. But then he goes on to say, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. So, so there we see the message and the miracles. It wasn't just the message, and that's what the writer of Hebrews is saying is, look, we didn't just hear the truth. We didn't just uh, hear the gospel of salvation from sins. God confirmed that message with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. We must not leave this generation without a witness. And, and I'm speaking to you as, 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 as one, one of us, one of you. We are Pentecostal charismatic, and they can say whatever they want to say about us. I have a whole book that describes who we are and, and why we call ourselves Pentecostal charismatic, the history of that. That's who we are. And, and there is no other group in the world that is qualified or prepared or well-versed in presenting signs, wonders, and miracles to this generation. In other words, if we don't do it, it's not going to get done. We have a responsibility to not allow this generation to pass away without a witness. And not just a witness in voice only, but why can't we have what they had? It's the same covenant, same New Testament, and it's the same Lord and the same calling and the same Great Commission. And if they preach the gospel and God bore witness with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, we should want the same for our generation. And I do. We need to give our generation a witness. Some people are not going to respond to preaching alone. There are people out there, and Jesus said it himself. He said you, he was talking to his generation. He said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And then Jesus proceeded to do signs and wonders. He didn't say, well, just tough. You're, you're going to have to believe or else. No, he said, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. So here's some signs and wonders. If that worked in Jesus' day, if he did it for his generation, he doesn't think any less of this one. We are not so modern that signs and wonders won't touch the heart of, of this generation. They are not so jaded and so, so educated and sophisticated that the healing power of God won't break down their walls. And I'm telling you, we just haven't used this lately, but it doesn't mean we can't use it, and we, won't, we will. We are going to implement these, these weapons, uh, this form of outreach. We must not leave this generation without a sign. And, and man, if you just look at history as a whole and look at what we're dealing with today, I don't, at least in my lifetime, I've never seen people so confused as they are right now. I mean, think about this level of confusion. When, when, when you're a young person and you don't know for sure whether you're a boy or a girl and you don't know for sure which bathroom to use because you're not sure of what sex you are, that's lost, folks. That's without a clue. They need a witness. And, and here's what signs do. Signs point the way. You know what? If, 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 if everyone knew where they were going in, in, on the, you know, the transportation system, the road, the road grid of, of the United States, if everyone knew where they were going, we wouldn't need any signs. You could just remove. Think how much money uh, the states would save if they didn't have to put up road signs. Just eliminate them all. You have a better view of the countryside. They wouldn't clutter up the horizon. And just do away with them. But if you did that, man, if you, if, if you did it for me, I wouldn't know how to get across the state. I, I'm so dependent on signs and GPS that half the time I don't know where I am. All I know is turn right at the next light, you know, and I follow that. But if you did away with signs with people who don't know their direction anyway, no wonder there's confusion in the world. Our world has never needed signs more than they need them right now. When you don't know whether you're a boy or a girl, when everything that should be clear and absolute in life has been removed, when they don't even know what truth is, what is your truth? There is no your truth and my truth. There's truth. And when you walk away from that, Anything goes. 
when you are talking to a world that has embraced that kind of thinking, they are lost. And what they need is signs. They've got to have a sign. Have you ever been lost and you thought, if I could just see a road sign, if I could just find out what road I'm on, at least I could go from there. And that's where they are. And the signs we have to offer are greater than the... Listen, I believe in the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Above all, I know that's what people need. But we have signs that will work more effectively than, hey, listen to me, I can tell you what you need to do. When you back your preaching up, with a, with a miracle. And, and, and we've got to know God's mercy and God's grace is available for this generation. If, if God had mercy on Nineveh, and He did. Remember Nineveh? Jo Jonah said you know, God's judgment was about to fall on Nineveh and, and He sent Jonah to go preach to them. And Jonah said, I don't want to. They need to have judgment. They deserve it. And he tried to run away. And God spoke to Jonah and said, you preach to them. He said, if I preach to them, they're going to repent. And, and God said, how can you have more mercy for a tree? Because, you know, Jonah was upset because this tree died. And God said, how could you have more mercy on a tree than, than on a city of 100,000 people who don't know their right hand from their left? Have we not returned to that state? We are dealing with nations, leaders of the world and their followers that don't know their right hand from their left. I mean, they don't know male from female. They don't know up from down. They don't know a truth from a lie. They're, they're, they're making heroes out of villains, and they're making villains out of heroes. This world is so far gone as far as their thinking goes. They need signs. Let's appeal to them on the most organic level possible. Forget logic, you know, forget making sense, forget trying to convince them to, that they're wrong. Let's just do miracles. How about that? Let's provide signs and wonders and healings that can't be denied. I, I believe this is the method that God is going to use, but He can't do it by Himself. He's going to have to use people. And uh, I volunteer. Sign me up and say what you want. I know I never wanted to be a Pentecostal preacher. I never wanted to be a healing evangelist, uh, you know, a Bible thumper or whatever else they call us. But you know what? Things have gone too far now. It, we need all hands on deck. We need to bring out every weapon at our disposal. And we need to go forward full speed ahead to reach this generation while there's still time. <laughs> so uh, that's really where I am. And, and, and I'm putting everything I have into this. Everything I have is at risk. Uh, I never had a nest egg to begin with, but what I do have, I've put it all in. And I'm expecting to see results. And I'm expecting to reach some of those people out there that are lost as a goose and they don't even know it. They're so lost, they don't know they're lost. So uh, this, I believe, is the way to go about it. Jesus said this in John 14, 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. So these are, you know, uh, that answers the question, well, who do you think you are, preacher? Do you think that you could actually do some of these things and have these signs, wonders, miracles in your ministry? Who are you? Well, I didn't come up with this by myself. But in John 14, 12, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. So this is something that Jesus said and wanted, and when we don't use these greater works or these methods, then we're not going to be as effective. And so again, if, if the world ever needed signs, they need it now. And I believe they'll respond to signs as well now as they ever have in history because they are so confused and they are so lost and, and there's, there's nothing really for the world to hold on to right now. Every time you think that, that a, a, a fact, a truth, an institution, a, a, an organization is, is trustworthy, we find out it's corrupt. And so we've been let down so much that uh, to find something solid, something real, something reliable is almost unheard of. So as the gospel is preached, and signs and wonders that cannot be denied are revealed or, or, or worked in our midst. 
I believe it's going to have a powerful effect on, on people's lives and give us the opportunity to, to, to really have a voice uh, that we haven't had up to this point, at least in the last 20 years. So we, we can do this now. In fact, let's apply this to ourselves. If you're dealing with sickness or disease in your body, especially chronic pain, I want to pray for you. I want to believe God for you. We might as well enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God first because we're in. We're, we're, uh, we're children of God. We're part of this. The, the covenant of healing belongs to us. And so uh, James said, if any man be sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. He, and, and he didn't say, and maybe God will do a miracle. No, he said, look, if, you're, uh, if anyone among you happens to be sick, then you pray and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. It didn't say it might. It didn't say it'll do it for some and won't for others. But it said the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. So let's believe that for you right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for these that are watching, for those that are dealing with illness, incurable diseases, uh, pain, chronic pain in their bodies. I pray right now that the power of God would flow through their bodies and drive out sickness and drive out disease. I thank you for the healing covenant, that it's just as real as the covenant of forgiveness, that the same God who died to forgive us of our sins bore those stripes on his back, to pay for our healing. And we receive and accept that now in Jesus' name. We pray the prayer of faith over these people in Jesus' name. And I say, and you say, amen. You can call our helpline. We're here to talk to you, to answer questions you may have or help you get more material. We would love uh, to communicate with you on another level. Uh, I want to as well offer my book bundle and this is probably something that we'll never do again because they won't let me. Uh, I just kind of made this up on the fly because I want to get these books out. I want you to have them but it's for fifty dollars or more. Uh, you call our helpline and we'll send you all these books. Uh, the first one is Salvation, Prepare to Meet Your Maker and that's uh, Presenting Salvation to Non-Believers. This is called the Gift of the Holy Spirit which would be the next step in the process once you get saved. You need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We explain the whole thing in this book, what it is, who it's for, and how to receive it. And then this is my Good News book, which is the next step in the process of discipleship. It'll explain to you who you are, where you came from, why you're here, and where you're going. We literally start from the Garden of Eden and go to the new heavens and the new earth in this book. And uh, it is a, a textbook on redemption. This book is called Living With No Regrets. It'll help you get over, get rid of baggage. Once you do these three things, if you have baggage left in your life, you can get ready for your future by getting over the past. And we deal with that in this book. And then this one's called Living in Stressful Times Without Losing Your Mind. And it is really uh, how, to, how to deal with the emotions of anger and fear, which are running rampant right now, uh, and, and help you to grow spiritually. We'll put you on the path of spiritual growth, and we emphasize the importance of that. There are some things in life that you just need to grow out of. You can't get delivered from dirty diapers. you got to grow out of them. And we talk about things like that in this book and how important spiritual maturity is. And then finally, God Likes Faith is an introduction and an overview to the message of faith. And once you understand faith, you're going to like it too. It's a little different than how we do things on earth as far as uh, trust but verify. <laughs> you, you don't do that with faith. You believe and you receive. And so we explain the difference here. And uh, you're going to love the message of faith presented in that book. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. If you've not partnered with this ministry, um, this is just an example of what I've been up to for the last several years. We are rebranding and restudying and representing all of our material in audio, print, and video. And it takes a lot of money to do that. And thank God for our partners that have stood with us. And I, I just have to say, I've been amazed. Uh, the people that have made this happen, most of them are people I never met before. Uh, people that I've never met personally, but they believe in what we're doing and they call in or they, they connect online, they become a monthly partner, and it's financed everything up to now. 
In fact, this whole studio uh, was built and paid for by the gifts from our partner base, and I can't thank you enough. I, I'm, I felt like a new person when I walked into this studio, and, and I'm able to broadcast here live or record anytime I want, 24 hours a day. It's quiet, it's nice and, and, and environmentally controlled. It's cool in the summer and it's warm in the winter. It's just wonderful. And, I, and, and you can't beat that view. Look at that view. Uh, yes, this is Tulsa. I can't go into the details. It's the magic of television, but I thought you might enjoy a little color, a little movement, and so we've provided that. Uh, if you haven't partnered with this ministry, pray about doing that. We want to go to the next level. We're actually on a test market right now in Tampa Bay in that area, and those bills are coming in. And, and that's money that we just don't have in our general fund. We need an additional 150 partners to stand with us and to join with us so that we can pay the bills for that station and, and even take steps beyond that. I want to get on on other platforms. You know, I didn't do all this work and we don't do all this, go to all this effort to, to, to hide this under a bushel. Uh, I need to increase my gospel footprint and on other outlets. If you agree with that, uh, pray about being a supporter. You can support us monthly. In fact, the ways to give are on the screen. You can use the QR code. You can text to give. And if you wanted, let's say you wanted to be a, a monthly partner and you have a phone, text 855-511-5991. Text an amount. Let's say you wanted to be a $50 a month partner. You put $50 in, in the in the text bar and you text it to that number and hit reoccurring gift. Boom, you're a partner. Follow the prompts and you become a partner just like that. We'll see that. We'll send you your partner packet, your gift. We'll begin to communicate with you. It's so easy. Let's use technology uh, to make it easier for us and to get the gospel out. If that's not going to work for you, you can call the helpline and they would be happy to set you up on an, a regular, many, many people, we, we charge their card every month. We take that on ourselves to do. You can trust us. We stop when you want it stopped, and uh, we'll do that for some, and others send in checks every month. Thank you for considering partnering with this ministry. We couldn't do it without you. And uh, the, the outreach that we're able to do in the months to come is really uh, going to be dependent on the generosity of our partners. So I trust the Lord speak to you and if you'll obey God and if I obey God then the will of God will be done and he gets the glory thank you for being with me today we're going to continue this teaching on the next episode you don't want to miss that till then remember this the good news is so good the bad news doesn't matter it's difficult to get the message of Jesus to the multitude without miracles this series reveals why we must expect miracles and how to use them to reach people the New Testament way Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. I love Greg. I love his sense of humor. I love how he bring out the word. I just, just love Greg. Awesome man. Awesome man of God. Immediately he became a favorite teacher of mine because he delivers the word of God with such warmth and balance and great clarity. He's just straight to the point and down to it. And just to let go, be happy.